Previously on the Turbo ZX2 build series. I started by removing the transmission first, and then removing the engine separately. I cleaned out the engine bay and seam welded the chassis, I fabricated up some mounts for a bigger radiator, and then I painted the engine bay its original color. Then I started putting together the forged internals and assembling the engine. Moved to a new house and got started tearing apart the interior. Then I freshened up the transmission with a limited slip differential. Last episode I finished assembling the engine and I had to make some custom brackets to fit everything to the modified engine. Most notably, the serpentine belt tensioner. That had to be completely fabricated from scratch. Sourcing the parts can be really difficult with this build as well, and sometimes the only option I have is the junkyard. But once I got the parts I needed, I finished off the engine with the clutch and flywheel, and that's where I'm at now. I also ran into an issue with my cams. I accidentally left them on the floor, which caused them to get rusty, so I asked you guys what I could do to kind of help get rid of this rust, and well, you guys came through. So due to a lot of the comments that I got on the last video, this was what was most highly recommended. And so this is what I got. Um, and I just put the cams in like 10 minutes ago and I can already see it working out really well. Um, so it's definitely working. Uh, all the rust is definitely going into the, to the minerals or whatever it is. So we're gonna leave this in here for the next maybe 10, 12 hours, see how it looks. We'll leave it in for as long as we need to, but um, feeling really hopeful about this stuff. The next step was to bleed the brake lines. Now I had a lot of air in it because I had changed the brake master cylinder out. So I had to reattach the brake lines and bleed the whole system. So the brake system is actuated by fluid that goes through all the brakes. And that fluor, fluid is pressurizing the brake pads that push against the rotor. So this is the wheel moving mm -hmm. and this clamps on the, the rotor. So that's what stops the car. So that fluid uh, requires, to be, it needs to be just fluid. If there's any air in the line, air will compress while as the fluid will not compress. Oh. So yeah, so the air is gonna, um, make a really mushy pedal uh, and in our case since there's like tons of air in the line i don't think you'd be able to even stop the car because there's so much air in the line so right now what we're doing is purging the system of any air uh, which is called bleeding the brakes um, so i'm opening the valve as he's pressing the brake pedal mm -hmm. and that gives it pressure and then i'm closing it when he's down at the bottom of the brake mm -hmm. pedal so it's not grabbing any air when he lets go of it because that's that's going to suck um, mm -hmm. air back in uh, so we're going to go through doing each corner uh, bleed each corner so I bled the rear passenger side brakes, and that one went pretty easily. I moved on to the next brake, and well, like any good project, I ran into problems. The brake bleeder had broken off of the caliper. I tried to revive it and pull the brake bleeder out, but I wasn't having any luck, so I had to go buy a new one. Cool. cool. Hey Ben. Yeah? Are you happy? Uh, no. You happy that you just got your new part? I'm not happy I spent $100. Oh yeah, that's a good point. And a very stock looking part. Yeah. So I swapped over the brake pads to the new brake caliper. I mounted everything up and put it on the rear disc. I was gonna bleed them out, but I didn't have anyone to help me, so I had to move on to other things. But we'll get back to that later. So I freshened up the transmission and put everything back together and got it ready to mate up to the engine. When you have a transmission as light and weak as mine, it makes it really easy to move around. So mating it up to the engine really wasn't that bad. So I finished bolting up the transmission to the engine and tightened down the bolts. Then I put the front and rear motor mounts onto the transmission and put the subframe into the engine bay so that I could drop the engine in. So the engine was just sitting there on the engine hoist, so I had to get the engine mounts cleaned up and ready to go in, which meant sanding them down, cleaning them up, grinding things off to make it smooth, and then painting it so that I can actually mount the engine in the engine bay on its proper mounts without having to use the engine hoist to hold it up. my engine bay. It's called a preval sprayer and uh, you can get it for like five bucks at Home Depot. Um, I've let the paint sit in it now and it's solid so that's not going to work. So I got a new one. So I'm just going to fill this up with new paint and we're going to spray the brackets.
So I got the engine mounted in, it's all bolted up by itself, got the engine hoist out of here, and there's now just a lot of room here to work with. Uh, so the next step that I can see anyway is to put the axles in. Um, seems to be the easiest next step, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and uh, we'll see where that takes us. A lot of my friends ask me like what's left of the build the engines in now like what's left like it should be like running any day now right well so I decided to make a list of things that I have that are left it's gonna be a while how is there still that much to do I don't know Ugh. I don't know it feels like it just never ends it's just like the further I get the further I have to go you know what? <laughs> screw it we're just gonna drive it All right, let's I'm, do it. I'm sick of this crap yeah. give me the key I don't key. think it's going to work like that. Key, come on. I don't even know what the key is. Uh. I got to put that on the list. I got to find the key. So we bled the brakes, and then we bled the brakes again, and bled the brakes again, and still not getting any brake pressure. So I'm assuming it's the brand new brake master cylinder. So I'm going to take it out and put in my old master cylinder, or just one that I have from another car, and see if that fixes the problem. Um, I hope it does, but then also, like, it's a brand new brake master cylinder, man. That's a hundred dollars. It's just gonna be out the out the door. So, oh well, stuff like this happens. This is this is building a car for you. So, I mean, this guy had a show build too. So, it, like, it's decently clean, but it's been sitting for a while. So it's so so. I think I can clean it up a little bit more, but. It is what it is. If this works, then I'll clean it up a bit more. Okay. So I went through the process of bleeding the brakes again, but hopefully this time it'll work. Hey! Dude, we got brakes. All right, dude, there's pressure? Yeah, there's, yeah, it's pretty good. Dude, it's pretty sweet. Good. All right, cool. But right now I'm gonna try to put the coolant housing on, which is this right here. Um, ordered a gasket, but the gasket doesn't actually fit the housing, which is really strange. So I'm gonna go run out to the park store and see if they have one that'll actually fit the housing. Um, so we can bolt that up and just get that out of the way. That should be super easy. So the other source said that you guys have that here. So hopefully, hopefully you do. So wait, this is the gasket number? Yes. All right. How'd it go, man? How'd it go? I got a gasket. The coolant thermostat housing went on without a hitch, and now it's time to check the cams. It was sitting in the rust resolvent for about 10 to 12 hours, and that was all it needed. It came out completely fresh metal. I mean, they look like practically brand new cams. I'll probably wipe them down just to make sure there's no residue sitting on the outside of them, but um, I'll put those in a later episode. Good to know that actually worked out. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching.